Hi everybody, uh, this is a look at the Nikon F2 35mm professional film camera made by Nikon between 1971 and 1980. Uh, this particular model was made in 1973 which makes it 40 year old and it's fitted with a DP1 finder which has a coupling pin for the lens and a CDS light meter inside. I'm just going to run over the features and functions of this camera and uh, I'll probably make another video as well to go further into details on uh, fitting a film, flashes and other accessories and other things I miss in this one. <laughs> so to start with I'll go over all the features and etc. Et um, I'll start with fitting the battery because it does use a battery for the uh, meter in the prism but that's all the battery is used for, everything else is uh, mechanically operated. But to fit the battery you've got a little cover on the bottom. Remove that with a uh, small coin, preferably aluminium so you don't scratch it. Just insert that with the cover. This is a lithium battery, a DL13N. Just pop that in with the plus side facing you which it shows you that on the cover itself. Pop that back on. That's the battery fitted. Well, I'm showing you the base, I'll show you the other things on the base. You've got on this side the uh, motor drive connections. That one's for the shutter release and that's for the film advance. Also on the bottom here is the rewind lever which you can use for uh, multiple exposures as well as rewinding the film at the end obviously. A standard tripod mount and you've got the open close key for the film back to show you that operates. See the little arrow points towards C for close so to open the back pull out the lever, turn the key to the open position which will click open the back <coughs> If you want to fit film, you can pull up the rewind crank fully all the way, drop a cartridge in, pull it across, just put the slot, uh, sorry, the film end into the slot there, wind it on a couple of times, fire in the shutter, and then you can close the back, put down a rewind lever obviously. Just close the back back up. That's the base of the camera covered. On the back, you've got a little window for the put in a uh, little piece of the film carton to show you the number of exposures and the ISO speed setting. So you've got a reminder and you've got film fitted basically. You've got the find a focusing screen release button on the back there. Moving to the front you have just remove the uh, lens body cap so I can show you this feature. You've got a depth of field preview button which operates the pin inside to stop down the lens to the set aperture. You've got a mirror lockup switch. Uh, you press in the preview button and turn the switch and it locks up the lens fully, sorry the mirror fully when it's set to the uh, white dots are set there. Just put that back down. Also on the front you've got a self timer which can time from 2 to 10 seconds and you can use that as a standard timer feature to get yourself in the shot or you can use it for timed exposures as well which I'll show you in a short while. Use it as a self timer you just turn it to the set amount, you've got a little black dot at the bottom here set that to say 6 seconds and then when you press the little button there it counts down and obviously when the shutter is cocked it will fire the shutter at that time. You've got the lens release button. You've also got a PC sync flash socket there as well. Moving to the top of the camera you've got the film advance lever which has a few features. First of all you move it to the standoff position so you can see the little red dot. It turns on the battery power to 
the prism for the meter. Uh, you can also check the battery power by pressing in this little button on the front of the prism and if you hold that in uh, the little meter should move to halfway to show you that the battery is okay. Also the film advance lever obviously advances the film, you can do it in short strokes or one long stroke and at the same time it moves on the frame counter. That's cocked the shutter. You can fire the shutter, the shutter release button is here in the centre, press the shutter release button you get that nice mechanical sound. On the shutter release button as well you've got a couple of settings, if you have the white dot in the centre that's the normal operation of the shutter. You can also move it to L for locked, so if you've caught the shutter but you don't want it firing you can prevent accidental pressing of the shutter by setting it to L. I will say it's not advisable to leave the shutter cocked for long periods of time. You've also got a T setting for timed, so if you move the little white dot to T, you can then do timed exposures uh, longer than the uh, shutter speed setting. Uh, again, I'll show you that in a short time. On the top of the prism, you've got the ASA or ISO film speed setting. It's currently set on 200 with a little red uh, arrow is. To change that you just lift it up slightly and you can turn that to a different film setting. That also when you turn it operates the uh, shutter speed setting. Shutter speeds range from two thousandths of a second all the way down to B and in between you've got one second, half second etc. Uh, B setting is bulb, so when you've got it set on that, you, when you press the shutter button, it will keep the shutter open until you let go of the uh, button itself, so you can time it uh, that way. Uh, if you've got it on B, sorry, if you've got it on B and set it to T, and you press the shutter, show you that, the shutter will remain open until you move it back to the normal position. So that's a way of doing really long exposures or to do timed exposures between 2 and 10 seconds again leave it on B, the shutter release on T and then cock the shutter. Using the cell timer set that to the exposure setting you want let's say for example 8 seconds and then when you fire the shutter in that mode, it keeps the shutter open for that period of time set on the self timer. Very nice little feature. Also on the top, you've got the, um, as I've also men already mentioned, the um, battery checker, but it also is the meter, uh, which I'll show you in a short while when I fit a lens. You've got the film rewind crank with a hot shoe mount for a dedicated flash or an accessory for fitting normal flashes. With the dedicated flash, it also couples with this pin here so it will light up a little light in the viewfinder for the flash ready. Finder to remove the finder, pressing the button and turn that lever there and then you've also got a little chrome button on the back which you have to do at the same time this is the finder you've got a replica of the shutter functions here you've also got a little black line there which shows you if the shutter is cocked because when the shutter is cocked it always points across to the white line there You've got the contacts for the prism, uh, sorry, the, the, the mounting brackets for the prism, and you've also got the battery contacts here for the prism, which provide its uh, power. Focusing screen, which can be removed for different screens, and to remove that, you can press in this release button again, and as you can see, it operates the little levers. Take that out. Finder back on, put the finder back on, just 
locate it and you press it down it clicks onto the pins at the front there. Okay to mount a lens and it can take lenses with the rabbit ears or prongs as they're called like this one uh, these include pre-AI lenses or uh, AI lenses as fitted to this FM with rabbit ears it needs those to couple with the pin on the prism uh, otherwise you have to do stop down metering so to fit a lens just line up the line on the lens with the dot on the body it locks and then to couple the aperture of the lens, the minimum aperture of the lens with the metering you turn the aperture ring fully to the left and then fully to the right and as you turn it fully to the right it sets the, win the number in the window to the minimum aperture of the lens, in this case it's 1.4 to take a picture straightforward um, make sure you've got the uh, AC speed set correctly for the film set to shutter speed you desire say 30 of a second turn on the meter point at the subject and then the needle you need to center the needle uh, on the top or through the viewfinder you get the same readout at the bottom and you, you simply turn say the aperture to centre the needle it was actually set correctly about at 4 for that particular reading so you've got the exposure set correctly advance the film and uh, take the picture uh, I was talking about uh, timed uh, features earlier and so just to recap that 1 to T Uh, B on the uh, shutter speed setting and then you can fire the shutter and it keeps the uh, shutter open until you set the shutter button back to normal again and it will release it that's pretty it uh, for the moment so I'm going to do another video show you other features of this camera Great camera, uh, you can still buy them on eBay. Uh, prices are quite high for one in good condition like this one. And uh, they still function very well, wouldn't be mechanical, they last a long time, they're very steadily built. Uh, they can still be serviced. I mean, obviously, if you buy one second hand and you know it's not been serviced, it's best to, to get it serviced. Uh, a specialist is Sova Wong, he's, he's on the internet I'll put the website at the bottom of my description and uh, he can service the camera prism for you and he can uh, modify it if you wish and uh, clean it and uh, it really makes a nice job. It put it'll put it back, or does all the refoaming, all the cleaning out, all the settings of the shutter speeds, and it makes it fully functional like new camera again. Very worthwhile doing if you're interested in film photography. So there you go. Um, I think I just mentioned it's fitted with a AN1 strap, which I was lucky to find, which was brand new unused. These lugs I've actually made myself, uh, which are, I've been told are better than the, the protections at uh, the protector. Sorry, I've made myself, and I've been told they're better than the original because these are made out of leather, where the original were rubber. And uh, there you go. That's the Nikon F2, 35 mm film camera. Look out for my other video, which I'll cover other features of this camera, using with the flash, etc. But for now, thanks for watching.